So today's question of the day is actually three questions. They are all very similar, and so I wanted to address all of them together. One of them is a gentleman has three different power stations that he's purchased and thought that it would work well to have them all running different things, but is finding that to be a pain in the neck. And so he wants to consolidate down to one unit that can do everything. Then another one is they bought a system from elsewhere, but they can't get any of the support that they need and are asking to get help from us. This is actually something that happens all the time with us at Powered Portable Solar. It's very common that people cannot get the support that they need on questions that they have for other solar generators. And they end up reaching out because they find my YouTube channel or whatever it is. And I'm happy to help. Uh, they, they're they actually returning their system and are going to order from PoweredPortableSolar.com so that way they can get the lifetime support. Okay, cool. This guy made a power station of his own that goes on a cart, like a, like a furniture or a, a hand cart. And he accidentally touched some wires together and he said he caused a huge spark that scared the crap out of, out of him and he thinks he fried his inverter or his battery. He doesn't want to mess with it anymore and he wants to run two fridges and a freezer for up to three days and wants to know what system to go with. So I'm going to go over those three questions uh, because they're all very similar, basically needing customer support and guidance as to what system is going to work best for them. So in the first case, this gentleman has a, a Bluetti AC50S, a Bluetti AC200 Max, and a Bluetti EP500 Pro. I have all three of these units, but they don't work well together, and I wish I had one single unit. I'd like to replace the AC200 Max and EP500 Pro for something that can do everything I need and keep the AC500S for portable power. What do you recommend? Okay, perfect. So unfortunately, the hardest thing to gauge is how what size system without knowing what you need to run. So that's one of the biggest things that we need to know is what do you want to run? Because if you just want to run a refrigerator, it's usually a very simple system. But if you wanted to run like the other person had two fridges and a freezer, they're usually going to also entail Wi-Fi, TV, some lights, maybe a fan. There may be a medical device in there. Uh, as well as kitchen appliances and other knickknacks like phones and laptops and things like that. Those are very common things that people that are so common to use that people oftentimes don't think about that. So in his case, knowing that he's got a really small, a fairly small, and then a pretty big system, and he wants to replace the AC200 Max and the EP500 Pro, typically what you'll want to do is sell, if, if you're looking at swapping, you want to sell what you can locally because the lithium batteries are technically classified as hazardous material. And in order to ship them, you have to have a special certification. Uh, I've gone through that certification process. It is a difficult class. You have to memorize a bunch of things that don't pertain to batteries because there's nine different classifications of hazardous material. And shipping and transporting them uh, can be very complicated. So you want to sell them locally to someone who can come to your house, pick them up, or you can sell them, you know, parking lot like on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, something like that. Without knowing what he wants to run, it's difficult to say. But it sounds like he wants something that's still portable. So most likely something like the EcoFlow Delta Pro. That's one of the main units that I go with because it's it does work really well. The support is better at EcoFlow than it is at Bluetti. But either way, that's one of the benefits you get of ordering through PoweredPortableSolar.com, just like the second question, is you do get lifetime support in any way that we can help. So you're talking to Americans who use these systems and actually know how to fix things. So that's probably what I would do, would be leaning towards something like the Delta Pro because it's more expandable. That or if they're not in a time crunch, because they do have some equipment right now, then maybe the Apollo when it comes available later this summer in August. So the second question, I bought my Delta Pro system directly from EcoFlow and now I'm not able to get the help that I need for connecting to my main electrical panel. I am planning on returning my system to EcoFlow and purchasing through PoweredPortableSolar.com so I can get help since no one has been able to help me. Can you tell me the steps and parts needed to getting the Delta Pro connected to my electrical panel. The Delta Pro is designed to work with the smart home panel made by EcoFlow. The advantage of the smart home panel is it's an auto transfer switch. So as soon as the grid power goes down, 
it automatically turns the whole system on and starts running within like 10 milliseconds or something like that. So that's really nice because then you don't have to worry about the power. It clicks on so fast you don't even notice the power kick on. The downside is the smart home panel can only hold up to 10 circuits. And for it's basically a critical loads panel and that's a really good way to go. And I think that's why EcoFlow went that route is you pre-select up to the 10 most important circuits that you wanna run. Now, if I read the rest of the, the email here, basically their electrician isn't able to figure out how to connect it, which is surprising to me because most electricians, it's just basically a critical loads panel. It should be very fairly easy to get connected. They're having a lot of difficulty and the electrician is ready to stop working basically. So that's one of the advantages of going with an interlock switch instead of a smart home panel. The interlock switch is something that electricians install very commonly. You can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's. And basically it's a plug that goes on your wall that you would connect a gas generator to. And it goes to your, that, then you have a big wire or cable that goes to your main electrical panel. And what you'll do is you'll turn off grid power so literally nothing's coming in from the grid and then you flip another switch to where you can supply power from your own source. Typically a gas generator, but in this case, a Delta Pro or a solar generator or power station, whatever you want to call it. And all you have to do is get an adapter that goes from the Delta Pros to whatever plug is on the interlock switch outlet. On mine, it's an SS2-50 plug. A lot of people, and even myself, prefer the NEMA 1450 plug or the L1430 plug. The L1430 plug is the same big 240 volt plug that is on the EcoFlow 240 volt hub. And so if you can get your outlet to be the same thing, then all you got to do is get an L1430 extension cable and then you plug that into your outlet for your interlock switch and then into the 240 volt hub and you're running your whole electrical panel up to the rated capacity of the Delta Pros. That's the route that I would go for the Delta Pro is have your electrician install an L1430 outlet on an interlock switch. It should be fairly straightforward for them to do and then get an L1430 extension cable just off Amazon or eBay and that's going to work really well for you. The only disadvantage is you have to manually turn it on but it's going to be extremely easy for electricians. It's going to cost a lot less than doing the smart home panel. And then you get to run your entire electrical panel up to the rated capacity of the Delta Pros. And then the third one, I made my own power station system that goes on a hand cart. While putting things together, I accidentally touched some of the wires together and caused a massive spark. I scared the crap out of me, and I think I fried my inverter or battery. I don't want to mess with it anymore. I want to run my two fridges and a freezer for up to three days. Can you tell me what system to go with to get that done? With DIY systems, they are definitely more affordable than buying a pre-made system. And that's because it's you're, you're doing the work, you're doing the labor. So you're paying your own time for that. You have to be careful of these things. So it sounds like he may not have taped off his wires when he was connecting things or something like that. Maybe the capacitors just didn't get pre-charged in this inverter, I don't know. This is why you need to have disconnects and fuses and know what you're doing when you're doing a DIY system. There are a ton of great DIY resources out there, but if you've never done it before, it can be quite daunting and stuff like this happens. I probably get an email about this about once a week or so of people saying, hey, I did my own system. I fried something or I ruined something. Can I replace it? Or, or they're looking for guidance on that. For two fridges and a freezer. Let's do some math here. If he wants power for up to three days. He didn't say if he wanted to just recharge off of the wall when the grid power is back or if he wants to recharge from a gas generator or if he also wants to do solar. So we'll factor that in. So in order to do that, he needs an estimated roughly, if he was just to have battery, no solar panels, he would need a roughly 22,000 watt hours of battery capacity, which is a fairly, fairly large battery capacity. But if he were to have solar panels, and to get to be able to recharge each day, then he could get away with about a 5,000 watt hour battery with about 1,200 watts of solar. So in that sense, actually the Delta Pro with one expansion battery and 1,200 watts of solar panels, that's gonna give him 7,200 watt hours of battery capacity, which is more than what he needs to get through a single night, which is gonna account for some poorer weather. And then 1,200 watts of solar, that's gonna allow him to recharge 
off of the solar panels every day while still running that equipment. And then if he needs to use a gas generator or the grid or anything like that, then he can top off using that, but the solar panels are gonna help offset all of that. So he could easily get 24 to 36 hours runtime off of that, even if the weather is only so-so. So that would be a really good setup to go with and the one that I would recommend. That's gonna be the most affordable option for what he's asking to do. Because if you were to jump up to 22 kilowatt hours of battery, he's gonna pay a lot for those batteries. So it really depends on his budget at that point. So generally the questions I like to ask are, what is their goal? What is their budget? What is their overall timeline of when they need to get something? What city and state do they live in? So I can look up solar conditions. And then what do they want to run specifically off the system? when they want to use it. If, how many refrigerators? You know, Do you want a water heater? Do you need a well pump? All those kinds of things. And then if those things use gas or electric for heat. So hopefully this helps you out guys. Remember, prepare for self-rescue. I'll see y'all in the next video.